Hey y'all, welcome back to Liner Creek Farm. <laughs> All right guys, today we're going to talk about um, how to get started in raising meat rabbits. Now through research and stuff, if you're really wanting to get into meat rabbits, uh, typically a lot of people breed the Californians and uh, the New Zealand rabbits. Um, what we did was bought a buck that was a New Zealand. He was a, he was a mutt, but he had... New Zealand in him. He was, um, I think he was actually, uh, Californian and New Zealand, um, but he was just sold to us as a mutt. And what we did is we bred him to our Flemish dough and we produced large size rabbits that grow quickly. Um, and then we started going from there and just saving back and, uh, uh saving back for breeders. And so that's kind of how we got started in meat rabbits. Now to start out, I would um, I would urge you to do uh, research on uh, meat to bone ratios when it comes to rabbits. Now when you get started in rabbits, you're at least going to want to start out with a buck and a doe. Um, a lot of people uh, start out with trios. You can go for... You can go for purebred rabbits um, or meat mutts. Um, it just depends on what you're really looking to do, um, what you're really uh, looking for with your rabbits. Um, if you want to start out with just meat mutts, they're the cheaper route. Um, they usually uh, have got some type of New Zealand or Californian in them, i found, in our area, that they're usually mixed with something like that. And so, you don't really know exactly with a meat what mutt what you're going to start out with unless somebody's kept some type of, of record of exactly how that animal was bred. But, if you're just wanting to start the cheaper route, you can find meat mutts um, on your Facebook marketplace pages, um, on Craigslist, on uh, even just through friends. If you live in a rural area, you probably have a friend or uh, have some, somebody that knows somebody that has some type of rabbits. Um, you can also go through 4-H groups, talk to your local school FFA. Um, somebody's going to know somebody that has rabbits. That would be your cheaper route. If you're just, if you're just looking for, what is it, Sassy? If you're just looking for, um, you know, just a cheaper animal and not wanting to put a lot of money in uh, when you first get started, then that's a really good option uh, to have the meat mutts. Now, if you're looking into getting more of the pedigreed rabbits, of course, you can talk to your local 4-H. Um, you can talk to your local 4-H, your local FFA. They're going to have um, some of your pur purebred rabbits. The one good thing about your purebred rabbits um, is you're going to know... They're going to keep records of weight and bloodlines and things like that. You're going to know typically um, what your meat to bone ratio is um, because they're going to keep those records. Um, they're typically, um, I've found harder to find or to get a hold of uh, your purebreds. Um, but um, I feel like they're a good option because they open up other lines. So we have our meat mutts here on the farm, um, but we have our purebred uh, rabbits as well, our pedigreed rabbits. And you not only can use those, the offspring for meat, um, but you have a better idea of bettering those lines, especially when it comes to meat to bone ratio. But also you can um, get a larger income through sales of the rabbits. Um, and you can um, open up another avenue of maybe showing rabbits or things like that. And that's why we ended up getting these um, Rex, the mini Rex breed, um, this year. Because uh, we are wanting, well, technically it's it's uh, New Year's Day. So not this year, last year, the 2023 year. 
um, because we were wanting to open up a new avenue for our family. And Now, if you decide um, which rabbits uh, you want to go for, whether you want to go for the pedigreed or just the meat mutts, either are good. Uh, but once you pick out your breed that you want, um, once you've done your research to figure out what kind of meat to bone ratio you want or what kind of growth rate you want, you now got to figure out um, how you're going to house the rabbits. I would recommend always being sure that you have your housing set up before you even buy the rabbits. Having to scatter around and figure out cages and find cages. Um, in our area, cages are hard to come by. Even at our local farm stores, they go very quickly. You pretty much have to buy them when you see them or when you, when you uh, go back to get them, they're not there. And so you need to think about what kind of cages or what, what kind of system you want to use to put your new rabbits in. Whether you buy a pair or a trio, um, you need to figure out how you're going to house them. We use the cages. Um, maybe on later down in the future um, for our grow outs, um, I'm interested in maybe doing some tractors of some sort. But for now, we use a hutch. Um, for our grow outs um, and uh, we use these uh, demore cages uh, for our breeders. I find that the cages are more efficient. Um, they're easier to clean um, and of course you can keep everybody separate and you don't have any accidental breedings. Now when you buy your cages I recommend to to single mate your um, your rabbits, keeping your does separate and your bucks separate. So if you have a trio, you're going to need three cages. If you have a pair, you're going to need two cages to start. But like I said, I recommend to have your cages put where that you want to put them, hung up, however you want to do it, and have them ready for your rabbits uh, before you get them. What kind of waters and feeders do you want or you need? I did a video here recently, and I'll try to link it below. But you can go as cheap or as expensive as you want on your cages, as you want on your waters and feed bowls. We just recently got these um, water and feed bowls, and I think the brand is Pet Lodge. They hook to the outside of the cage. Gives the rabbits a little more force place here. If you've got a rabbit like this, this guy right here, he loves to hop in his water. These are perfect because I can put the water up higher and he can't hop in his water. Um, for the smaller rabbits, the minis, he's just a few months old. Um, and so he don't need the big, the big bowls. But these are a half a pint and the larger ones are a pint. And I have found that this is the perfect amount of water. They do not run out of water. Um, I fill them up every single day, um, but they do not run out of water. Usually they have a little bit in the bottom of them um, from watering the previous day. So they've worked out great. You also can use, and I recommend these as well, um, but if you've got a rabbit that likes playing and flipping things over, I don't recommend. She doesn't flip things over, so it's not that big of a deal. But cat and water bowls, uh, preferably the stainless steel um, because they're easy to sterilize and clean. So like I said, it can go as cheap or as expensive as you want. These run about $3 a piece for the pints, maybe $2 a piece for the uh, the half pints. And these run you about $1.25 at the dollar store. So what it, whichever way you want to go. Also, when you get started in the rabbits, there's a couple things that you need to consider. <clears throat> what you're going to feed the rabbits. If they're in the tractors... They're going to get mostly a grass diet. Um, some people add pellets. Some people add hay. In the cages, you can choose to just do pellets. You can choose um, to not do pellets and just do hay. You can choose to do pellets and hay. What we do here on our farm is we do hay and pellets. The rabbits get a little bit less hay in the summertime because I do um, pick grass and weeds often. Um, they get scraps from the garden, things like that. Um, so they don't get as much hay in the summertime. I do give them quite a bit of hay in the wintertime. Um, 
just to have, just for for them to have something to do, something to line their cage, something to eat to keep them warm. Along with that, they do get a pellets. We give a quarter a pound of pellets um, per each rabbit daily, along with a couple handfuls of hay, as you can see. And that's what we've decided works best for our, um, our farm. Our grow outs get unlimited amount of hay and uh, pellets as they grow um, until about 10 to 12 weeks when we butcher. Something you also wanna consider um, when you get rabbits, especially when you have the wire cages, is something for your rabbits to climb up on uh, to rest their feet. If you can see in this cage, we have wood here. We also have a large piece of wood in the back, but she sits on this a lot. In this one, we have wood in the back, and we also have a Heidi house. Um, he just plays in it and, and things like this. We have a doe here. She has a Heidi house, and she has uh, it has a roof on it, and so she goes in that and on top of it very often. Um, that's going to keep you from uh, having an animal that gets sore hawks. Um, and gives them a little bit of a break on their feet when it comes to the cages. Well, guys, like I said in this video and in a, a couple videos previously, raising rabbits can be as expensive or as cheap as you like. There's many options out there, many things that you can do, many things that you can choose not to do. Um, many ways to raise the rabbits and, and uh, many ways to house the rabbits. Um, so it can be um, any way you would like it to be. Um, rabbits are very versatile and uh, they're very easy to raise and I'm an advocate for raising meat rabbits on the farm. But I hope this video was informational. Um, I hope that it helped you out. I hope that you all will come back again and uh, if anybody has any um, anything, to, anything to add, um, we appreciate it. You can leave it down in the comments below. If you have any questions, please uh, leave those in the comments below as well. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and uh, like the video. We appreciate it. We'll see you later. Bye.